Good morning, everybody. Wednesday, November 4th, the election hanging in the balance. What else would we want to think about but GIS? So here we go. We're going to learn about linear referencing using the V distance tool in QGIS. So first, what is linear referencing? Linear referencing is a way to specify the location of a feature by its distance along a line. So a great example might be a highway bridge located along a road. You could specify the location of that highway bridge by its latitude and longitude, but that's not so helpful for the road crews who are out there working on the bridge. For them, it's much easier to know how many miles along the highway is that bridge occurring. And that would be its, its linear reference, its distance along the line, essentially. So um, in this example, in, in our future, our coming, upcoming example, what if the feature is not exactly on the line? Okay, I don't know, I don't know why the bridge wouldn't be on the road, but <laughs> imagine it wasn't for some reason. What we would do is then we would first project that point onto the line using the shortest Euclidean distance. So just bump it over the shortest distance so it sits on the actual line. Then we would compute the linear reference or the distance along the line. So in this case, um, this bridge is located on Highway 12, it's bridge number 101, and its location is 10.5 miles along the highway. Okay, so with that in mind, let's see how we can apply linear referencing to our own problem, which is slightly different. We have a flow path for the Middlebury River, which is this file, topo profile line, and we have a bunch of uh, terraces that we have um, traced that were formed by the river. And we'd like to know how far along the river are these terraces occurring. Our ultimate goal is to create something like this, a plot of terrace elevation versus their distance along the river, where each gray dot represents a terrace. So we need to get this distance along the river. OK, so to do that, um, we're going to use the v.distance tool. But before we do, do so, the v.distance tool actually requires that we create a field in the attribute table to populate. So I'm going to right click the attribute table of this uh, terraces polygon. We'll start editing and we will add a new field here. And we're going to call it dist. It's going to be a numerical field because we want to put distance into it. So we'll make it a decimal number. Let's give it a length of five, make sure we have enough long enough numbers to do this. Let's say precision of one. So there's the field. Um, all of the features are empty currently. Very important to stop saving, uh, stop editing and save your changes. So we'll close that. And now let's go find the v.distance tool. Here it is. So the way this thinks about things, it thinks about uh, a set of features you're going from and a set of features you're going to. So we're going to be going from the terrace polygons directly to the, the topo profile line. So from will be set to our terrace polygons, and to will be set to our topo profile line. If you would like to uh, filter the, the features by maximum or minimum distance and exclude ones that are too far away, for example, you could put in some thresholds here in your maximum and minimum. Very importantly, we have to go in and select what metrics we want to actually compute. So um, we could compute distance from the terrace to the flow line. We could compute the x coordinate or the longitude of that projected point on the flow line, the latitude of that projected point on the flow line. Here's the one we actually want. This is distance of the projected point along the flow line. So that's the one we're going to choose. You could also do angle between the angle of the line that connects the, the terrace to the flow line. So lots of things you can compute here. It's a very powerful tool. Um, so we'll hit OK. We're just going to do distance along. And then we have to tell it which, uh, at, which attribute column we want to use. That's going to be the distance field that we just made. So put those distance values in the dis distance field. And we're going to leave everything else blank for the minute. I'm also just going to leave these outputs as temporary for right now. So we'll hit Run. 
Okay, so that finished, and what you can see is it created a new, a couple of new layers. Um, one is pretty cool. It's <coughs> a layer called output, and it's a, a, a polyline shape file where each feature shows the actual line connecting the terrace to the river. So you can imagine that's useful for a lot of different applications where you might actually want that line itself. Then the other feature we have here is this output, um, which is essentially a copy of the terrace's polygon shape file. But if you open up the attribute table, you can see it has a lot of the same attribute columns as the terrace's polygon, but it also has this new column distance. Um, and one thing we can do, just now's a good time to figure out which direction the distance was measured, upstream or downstream. So if we highlight this particular uh, feature right here, number one, notice it has a downstream distance of 9,240. And you can see it occurs at the very bottom of the, the river flow line. Let's go to the top now. This one has a distance of 2,689. And we can see that is one of our highest terraces way up near the top of the river. So the um, linear referencing coordinate system for the terraces starts at the top of the river, and the, num the distances are given as distance downstream from the top of the river. Okay, so now that we have the information, um, next thing to do for us in, in our lab is going to be to export this. So we're going to right click, um, export, save features as and we will use a comma separated value. This is going to be a .csv text file. And we can leave everything else blank. If you only wanted certain select features, you could, so you could check that. But we want everything. And we're going to call it terraces xy2. And we'll hit OK. It was added onto our file, but also easier thing to do and the thing we want to do is just go um, right into the folder where you saved it. Uh, you may have to right click open with Excel but uh, or you may have to open Excel itself and then go back and find the file but your goal is to get it open in Excel and what we now have is the, um, the elevation of each terrace, the downstream distance of each terrace as well as uh, individual identifiers for the terrace, you know, numbers 1 through 59. And we still have the original um, identifiers too, so we can see some of these surfaces are glacial uplands, those are coded as 1, and then others are terraces, which would be coded as 0. So stay tuned, and we'll talk about how to now plot these data up on the same plot as your river profile. Thanks.